and we're going to look at the sum and difference rule. So what this says is if you have a bunch of things added together, what do you think the derivative of x squared plus 3x minus 7 is? Well, it's rather simple. It, in fact, goes with what your gut feeling would be. Because the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 3x is 3. And the derivative of minus 7 is 0. So we wouldn't even have to write that. And the derivative of the entire function is just 2x plus 3. So what the sum and difference rule is saying is that if you are adding or subtracting a bunch of functions together, what you can do is you could do the derivative of each one separately and then add or subtract them just like you had before in the end. That's exactly what we did in this first one. We just did the derivative of each one separately and wrote that as the derivative of the entire function. So with this in mind, here's a relatively straightforward one. We have three things there. We can just do the derivative of each one separately. And your derivative will just be 16x plus 3. Again, just introducing some new notation. Here's another notation for functions. This part here is just like writing f of x equals. The way that it's written, it says f is a function that takes every x and does this to it. When you plug in the x, that would be what you get for your y. That's just another notation for the same thing. So as far as writing this one out, again, our initial look at the function, can you see that each of the terms is written in a way that you could do the power rule? So now when we do our derivative, if I bring the 2 thirds out in front, 2 thirds of 9 is 6. Subtract 1 from the exponent, and you'll get negative 1 third. Bring the 1 fifth out in front. 1 fifth of 10 is 2. Subtract 1 from the exponent, and you get negative 4 fifths. But there's going to be times that your original function doesn't fit the pattern that we've had so far. So for example, this one, we've got y equals x squared minus 4 to the power of 2. It's not adding and subtracting power rules right now. But what we could do is we could say, well, that's squared. That means x squared minus 4 times x squared minus 4. And if I multiply that out, I'm going to get x to the 4 minus 8x squared plus 16. So by expanding that, I change it into the form where it is adding and subtracting a bunch of power rules. And now I can find my derivative by taking the derivative of each one. So this will be 4x cubed minus 16x plus 0, and we have our derivative. Later on, we're going to learn, some of you have learned it already, we're going to learn another technique that we could use for this one, something called the chain rule. But right now, all we could do with this one is expand it so that it's in a form that is a sum and or difference of a bunch of different power rules, and then we can do each one separately. So sometimes you've got to be creative. 
So what would you do in this one? Close, right? So you're thinking, we're multiplying right here. So you might want to do the derivative of one times by the derivative of the other one, okay? But that doesn't fit. We haven't learned a rule yet for multiplying. So you might think, well, since the, the rule for adding was just doing the derivative separately, maybe the rule for multiplying is just to do this derivative separately. We're going to find out the, the rule for multiplying is a little bit messier. So how could we manipulate this one so that it does look like what we've done so far? What would happen if I did that, right? You have an x to the 1 third out in front. I could distribute that. Of course, I chose numbers that would make your mental math brain hurt a little bit. 6x squared times the cube root of x is 6x to the what? Okay. See, this is, this is supposed to make your head hurt a little bit. How did I do that? Okay, well, first of all, are you okay that the x, the cube root of x is x to the one-third? And if you're multiplying that by 6x squared, what is your rule for multiplying exponents with the same base? You add them, right? So how do I add? One third plus two. Well, I would need a common denominator. So two is the same as six over three plus one over three will give me seven over three. And similarly, if I distribute there, I'm going to get three x to the four over three. So we chose numbers that would re make us think about our rules. And now we can take our derivative because it's in the right form. We can bring the 7 thirds out in front. 7 thirds times 6 is? So a little bit of stuff here for mental math, for doing this quickly. It's going to be 14. What I would probably do to get 14 is not multiply 6 times 7 and get 42 and then divide by 3, even though that gives you 14. Mental math-wise, it's always going to be easier if you simplify in the dividing first. And 6 divided by 3 is 2, and then 2 times 7 will give you 14. So it's going to be 14, subtract 1 from the exponent, we'll leave you with 4 thirds. Bring the 4 thirds out in front. Again, I do the dividing first. I'm just going to get 4, subtract 1 from the exponent, x to the 1 third. So part C, currently, can you see that this is not in the right form of adding or subtracting polynomials or individual ones that you could do the power rule for? What strategy do we have to use here? I'm going to call this strategy, I don't know if this is a word, 
unadding fractions. Have you ever had to unadd fractions in math? Not very often. You've had to add fractions, right? How do you add fractions? Get a common denominator, and then you put the tops together and have it all over the bottom, right? So now, unadding fractions is you imagine someone did that already, and you want to undo that. So if you were unadding fractions, what would it look like right before this? Well, you would have two things with a common denominator. What would that common denominator be? 3x and 3x. And what would be on top of the first one? 2x to the 7. And on top of the second one, a 9. Right? If you added those together, can you see that you would get this? So what am I doing? I'm unadding. I don't know if that's a word, but that's what I'm trying to do. Now, what do you think would have been, like, when you're adding fractions, you would have got a common denominator. What would this have looked like before you had the common denominator? Does this one simplify at all? Yeah, you probably had a 2x to the 6 divided by 3 before that. And then you had here probably just a 3 over x. Because now my denominators aren't the same. If you had to add those fractions together, you would get a common denominator and then get to this step and then add them and get to that step. But now we've got things added together. The only thing we have to look at are each of them in the form that we can use our power rule. Can you see the first one already is? But our second one, we still have that x on the bottom. So to get this into the form where we can use our power rule, we would bring that x to the top, and that would be an x to the minus 1. And now we can apply our power rule. If I bring that 6 out in front, I'm going to get 12 over 3, but 12 over 3 is just 4. Subtract 1 from the exponent. If I bring the negative 1 out in front, I'm going to get a negative 3 and subtract 1 from the exponent. And this will be the derivative, so I need to make sure I label that correctly as the derivative. So in order to figure this one out, we had to unadd our fractions. We had to break it up so that it was in a form that we could do it. Of course, later on, we're going to learn a derivative rule for all divisions. So today, we learned a derivative rule for powers. And we learned a derivative rule if you're adding and subtracting things. Later on, we're going to learn special rules for what happens when we multiply, what happens when we divide. But we haven't learned those yet, so probably later on you would use the division rule for this one. But since we haven't learned it yet, we think, how can we manipulate something algebraically to get it into a form that we can work with? And that's a huge mathematical skill that you use across the board, because sometimes you get something, you can't work with it in one form, but if you change it to another form, you can solve it. Last one here, working backwards. So if this was the derivative, what do you think the original function was? Well, this one's going to have an x to the power of 4. What number has to be in front in order? It has to have a 5 in front. And if there's a 5 at the end, going to need a 5x. So there's an answer. Is that the only answer? No. You could have, can you see that you could have had something else here? What could you have at the end? Plus any number. So if, if you have this question, and do you have a favorite number? Do you have a favorite number? 
15. So if 15 is your favorite number and you're feeling like it's been underrepresented in mathematical answers on tests that you've been doing, now you have the opportunity because it says find a function. So now you could add 15 if that's your favorite number whenever a question comes up like this. We're going to find out later that we're going to say plus c, where c can be any real number, because you could add any constant at the end that you wanted. So on these questions, you could say, if you were asked to write out all the equations possible, well, then you would have to somehow write a general statement like this that says it could be any number at the end. But this question, the way that it was written, it didn't say find them all. It just said find a function. So you were allowed to just do one. You didn't have to add a number. Or if you wanted to add 15 because it's your favorite, you could do that. And it wouldn't matter. But if you were asked to write all functions, then you would have to write plus C and say any one would be possible. Okay, so we'll take the last 10 minutes to work on these.